What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're going to be jumping into something. I'm not sure what the hell I'm looking at, honestly. It looks like a whole wall of complicated. That's what it looks like. Uh, we're going to be jumping into it, though. Modular scent, not a spaceship. This is an instrument. We are going to cut it up into pieces just to make it easier to watch because not everybody got time to come watch a 45-minute reaction. So, Let's jump into it. It's coming at us from Vincent. Much love, Vincent. It's been a pleasure having you in the Discord. Let's see what we got. This is not a spaceship. It sure the hell looks like one. Let's go. If you guys enjoyed along the way, go over and show Rob Scallion some love on his channel. We're subbed up now. I hope you can do the same. Let's roll it. Hey, stop shrinking. Play. That scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah. Red light? Yeah. Red light? Yeah. We've been talking about this video for three, four yeah. years. I know, and we were going, we had plans to film it right before. Who, where do I, where do I look? Um, I think it's the main camera. This one's the main <laughs> camera, yeah. We we're going to do it and then COVID happened. Yeah. So this is, this coming. is exciting. Modular synthesizers. Yes. This is a spaceship. Modular synthesizers. From like a sci-fi movie. Like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. It seriously looks like something from the set of Lost in Space. Remember the old like console <laughs> in the ship? <laughs> this was super fun. This is your instrument. Yeah. What's a synth? I think a synth broadly is mm -hmm. any electronic music or just sound making device. If you're electronically producing a sound, that's a synth. It's a synth. So, and then this is like the <laughs> modular synth final boss. <laughs> 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 yeah, <I'm here. laughs> a modular synth just means that you have modules that make it up. That means that you can customize it. So yeah. not just the usual synth parameters mm -hmm. like pitch and uh, you know tone, but you also want to be able to have it randomize notes or you know, there's so many options. It's basically like, what would you want an electronic instrument to be able to do? You can probably find the right module yeah. for it and pair it with the other modules of the other options that you want to have. In you literally have to be a wizard to put one of these things together inside your house, though. Like, legitimately, how much knowledge and research that must have taken. Your synth. No, this yeah, you can have tiny ones. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, it could be a three-module synth. It could be a, I don't know how many I have here. Yeah. Probably about 100. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, here's one yeah, yeah, module. Yeah, one module. You can buy all these different modules that do all these different things mm -hmm. and then patch them together. How could you possibly make sense of this? So the patch cable is yeah. another big thing. So for instance, the traditional yeah. synthesizer is an oscillator that makes a sound, yeah. like just a tone. And then you would patch another module, let's say that's uh, controlling the pitch. So you'd patch up the pitch to the oscillator. In a regular, like like this thing? Yeah, that has something controlling the pitch of the oscillator. But it's all, but it's, all, but it's, it's behind not the module. Yeah, you don't get to change that connection because yeah. that's all mm -hmm. underneath the, the face plate. Yeah, being a guitar player. This kind of reminds me of like a guitar pedal board. You plug in your guitar, this is where you're getting your main signal, and then you go to distortion, reverb, and yeah. then it goes out. And then this is your distortion and reverb and your guitar pedals, but you can change the order of them. Yeah, so if you Module. think of a guitar pedal board, you yeah. can change the order of what your pedals totally. are in, and that changes the sound of the effects. With modular, not only are you doing it with audio, but you have what's called CV or control voltage. Yeah, okay, that's something yeah. that's way different here. Control voltage is just a signal that's either low or high or anywhere in between, and it can be moving mm. at any rate. The best way to think of it is like invisible hands. This is what modular yeah. people say. So if you <laughs> yeah, have yeah. like, let's say you're, you're Start guitar, doing something right? and so oh, that we yeah, can like sure. yeah show people so one thing about pulling out chords when you're dealing with a huge synth is just try and get the same color and that just keeps them organized and i imagine you color code them as These you're cables patching are color something coded in by length. So that's oh, just like, okay. if you know where you want to patch something, you yeah. can guess the length of cord you Jesus, want. Jesus, like, there's cables everywhere. How in the hell do you figure out where it goes? Holding out a sound in an audio program. We're undoing your work here and you can't get oh, it yeah. back. No, like, yeah. This patch is gone. I, I recorded it out and that's the only version of it that will ever exist. That seems to be something really cool about modular synth is that it is, you know, fully synthetic, but there's a realness to it, for lack of a better yeah, word. Yeah. And that like, it's a one-off thing that you created and there's no getting it back. I think that changes your mindset and yeah. your approach to it. I like how these two have these are called uh, Maybe, stack yeah. cables. If you want to like double up, send the same signal somewhere else, you can just plug it into that same mm -hmm. patch cable rather than finding like a yeah. splitter module. These can be used for an audio signal and CV. Yeah, audio is just a wave. 
Uh huh. And CV is just a slow wave. Well, CV could be any speed of wave, but when you're hearing a sound, it's just like the air vibrating super uh -huh. fast. When you're converting a real sound into a recording, all it's doing is changing that air vibration into a pattern of electricity. Yeah, it's just the same thing. It's just yeah. voltage going up and down on these. Yeah, exactly. The thing I was gonna say about the invisible hands is like, let's say you have a synth and you're making it go like, wow, 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 uh -huh. wow. And you want that wow, wow to happen. Instead of you having to turn the filter knob, wow, Wow, wow. You can just get mm -hmm. a wave that goes up and down at that speed, and then plug that into the filter, and then it's wowing on its own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able this is like science. Able to make a patch, you would call it. Something that sounds musical and hopefully pretty from this. And my goal just above that is to also understand it. Like maybe if we build something from scratch, yeah. then we can understand what it's doing and just start with the absolute basics. There are some great ways to do this stuff without even buying the modules. There's free yeah, software. Yeah. So if you want to give it a try without software. like spending a ton of money. How much is a module? Some of them would be like, $100, some of them will be like 500, some mm -hmm. will be over a thousand. Mm. I'm super lucky, I do a lot of videos about these that so you are viewed by a lot free. of people. <laughs> so probably about half this system I did not pay for. Uh, this is a new car. Oh yeah, this this actually is more expensive than the car I drive. I should point out is this is an insane synth and this is a big passion of mine and you know, of course, I'm very fortunate to have this, but you can do a lot with a much smaller setup. Okay, so absolute, Basics. Plug in an oscillator. An oscillator is just the thing that makes tones. This is just a really nice quality analog VCO, which stands for voltage controlled oscillator. Because it's analog, there's a physical thing that's vibrating in there. Yeah, I don't actually know exactly how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really <laughs> know how oscillators it work either. So many times, and there's something electronic that's vibrating there. That's just your output. So that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. So get, plugging it into, it into the a mixer that goes to the speaker in our audio mm -hmm. recorder. Everything feeds into that. Yeah, this is the oscillator, right? And we've got a choice between a few different types of waveforms. Some of them, turn the pitch up. Ooh, I guess you could just play this. Hey, I'm getting a song. Oh, all right. It's like a theremin. If you can get yeah. really good at turning knobs, yeah. you, can, you can play just this one. So far, I understand this. This is making a tone. You can change its pitch. Is there like yeah. a mute button? We think of instruments as like, you press a button and a sound happens. Or yeah. you just pluck a string and a sound happens. With electronic music, sort of have that idea as well because you think of a synthesizer yeah. with a keyboard attached and you're like, when I press a note, you get a sound. But the sound is constant on electricity, yes? It would be just a constant tone and you would just put stops into it when you wanted it to stop. But actually what's happening is the oscillators are constantly going yeah. and the keys let the sound through. Uh -huh. In the same way, instead of plugging this directly to our speaker, I would plug it first into what's called a, a voltage controlled amplifier yeah. or a VCA. And then I'm gonna take the output of the VCA to the speaker. And now the voltage controlled amplifier has a volume control for mm -hmm. that tone we were sending it. But there's also control voltage control over that volume control. So what I'm gonna do is okay. send one of these slow waves to control <laughs> the volume, right? Basically, this is another oscillator. You're controlling invisible hands yeah. that are like on that knob going like this yeah. now. So right now it's like, you can picture like a saw wave turning to the max volume and then drifting down, but we can make it more like wavy where it like fades in and out. Mm -hmm. And that's the CV. Yeah, that's the CV controlling the volume of that tone. And just as a, a fun example, if I took this same signal to control the pitch at the same time, <laughs> right? and then okay. I control the amount of that pitch change, right? Dialing in the size of that mm -hmm. control voltage wave. And if I zero it out, then we don't hear that effect at all. This is beyond, like, impressive. Legitimately a brilliant explanation so far of how things are working. Not that I could run out and put anything like this together in my wildest of dreams, nor would I have a use for it. But my God, the people that do know what they're doing and have a use for it, this has so many different applications that you can put it to. Like, very, very cool. Let's go. Okay, so right now... This guy is set up to just do this yeah. in CV. Yeah. And now basically those invisible hands are being applied through these two patches that are split 
to both the pitch yep. of the oscillator as well as the volume of the oscillator. So okay. it's really like you're building music from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. Like from just a sound, you have to you sculpt into it. <laughs> so if I unplug this, yeah. then we get nothing. Yeah, because it's controlling the volume and the pitch. Changing the knobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our invisible hands going. Yeah. This module looks really crazy, but it's simple. It just makes a pitch. Modular ends up looking complicated because it gives you access to mm -hmm. almost every possible parameter. Where maybe a lot of times there's something you're never going to use or very rarely going to use. And yeah. like most patches I make, I'm not using every single module. Of definitely not using every single input on every single module. But one thing we could do that would just immediately sound much nicer. If I just like hit play on this sequencer. Uh -huh. What is a sequencer? The easiest way to explain a sequencer is just that it makes events happen in mm -hmm. time. This is a 16 step sequencer. This is a module and this is a separate module, but they mm -hmm. interface. This one, the speed of it is controlling both of them. You can tell by the lights always yeah. being in sync. What I'm gonna do is plug one of these sequencer outputs to mm -hmm. what's called the volt per octave input. And that just means that it tracks according to musical scales that we tend to use. So oh, like one volt, okay. It changes it exactly by an octave. And yeah. from that, you can determine like a 12th of an octave is a semitone, mm. that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Oh, is this a sequence right here in the... In the... Yeah, so this is going across here, and each of these outputs is playing a different sequence, which you can control by these knobs. This will give us a sequence that roughly should be going up. Mm -hmm. Let's turn up the volume. <laughs> oh, look at that. What, what do these do then? So I understand so, this is the sequence, and it's going yeah. through them. So on each step, like let's say I just hold one step, I can choose what note I want coming out of this eighth output. Whoa. So let's figure out what scale we're in. This sounds like it's good to pretty much major. Major, yeah. That, I think, is our tonic. So let's say we start on our tonic, second note, uh, fifth. Next one is octave up. Mm -hmm. We could do something like that again. And then I'm just going to quickly fill in, like, random other scale notes yeah. for the rest <laughs> to just make this faster. <laughs> now when I let go, it plays. The hardest part would be, I think, duplicating anything that you created. I mean, I guess if you were really good and you wrote down or remembered what it was that you were doing, you might be able to duplicate it, possibly. But it still seems like there would be so many. You would have to have the most documented notes in the world. <laughs> it's super, like, video gamey. Yeah. Because this is just controlling a change to this pitch. Yeah. So if I go back to the original pitch, I can move all of it, like, yeah, down. Yeah, you're transposing the whole thing. Oh. Here's something fun about this sequencer. So let's just take one of these outputs. I'll take the very first one. We just have something that's constantly playing, yeah. right? Every time the sequencer moves to mm -hmm. the next pitch, which is at an even tempo, uh -huh. it's changing and it's just constantly going. And so to be more musical rather than just being like, that there's dude, always dude, notes dude, going. Dude, I'm gonna go back to this maths module. Mm -hmm. And this one is the invisible hands. Yeah. So this is a CV signal. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is trigger those um, CV signals to happen mm -hmm. only on certain beats. So I'm going to slide okay. all these to zero. Okay, explain to me this. <laughs> right. Yeah. So each of these sliders uh -huh. sets the probability that on that step of the sequence, <laughs> it will actually Oh, fire. we're getting really com right? complicated. We're getting really complicated with probabilities. So if they're all to the left, nothing happens. So now we're using like random sequences. Yeah. Like, okay, so, say, so this sequence, is slide... this sequence synced with that? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do then, is slide one all the way to the right. And that's sliding maybe... the probability to that be 100%, 100%. you're going to get a note that time. So let's do maybe just like okay. every quarter note this would be. Okay. Every four. So I'm going to trigger this invisible hands. So every time in that sequence, this is going to trigger this, yeah. which is going to... You're hearing some notes sneak in yeah. after the triggers, right? The envelope doesn't close uh -huh. fast enough, so the next note is sneaking through mm -hmm. while it's still turning down the volume. Yeah. If I make this short enough, we yeah. just get this sequence, right? Uh -huh. Every quarter note, we get whatever note happens to be coming out there. Okay, so this is the sequencer, and you have it set to where every quarter Mind note boggling. in the sequence, you go to here, yeah. that gives you an envelope, which is then going towards the volume, yep. 
and this sequencer is changing the notes yeah. to be in a musical way, but it's only getting through because every quarter note, this is this triggering is it in. This is not here at volume, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. So a fun thing to do is introduce a little probability where let's say I turn some of these down to half. Uh-huh. You always hear that one that's 100, and every once in a while some of the other ones come through. Yeah. And if we just like, I love to do this, just randomly slide a few of the others to be lower, <laughs> Now you get a sequence that's like, there's noticeable parts to it that are going to be similar. But I guess as long as you have that, maybe if we have every fourth, then we at yeah, least true. have a constant. Because we know that there's a 100% probability of the quarter notes. Yeah. Wow, I see how this can get like... <laughs> this would be okay, addicting. So if I wanted to do every eighth note, I would bring the probability of all of these every up. Other one. Yeah. And then... Okay. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And then if I bring this up, the fall knob. Yeah, that's the decay of the envelope, so how long it takes to turn the volume back down. Mm -hmm. And then I can move the key, the key of everything. That is satisfying. <laughs> the butterfly effect starts here, kind of. Can we put some, okay, I understand this. Yeah. Can we put some reverb on it? Yes, we can. Yeah. How will we do that, though, since it goes, will we so, bring it to a reverb and then to the mixer? I would take it, like, I put the reverb right at the end, because you yeah, have the course, volume controlling course. the sound, and you want the reverb to not be, like, coming in and out. I could see how, if you had it closer in the chain, you could do some crazy stuff with reverb. Oh, yeah. Do you want to send it to the spring reverb? Yeah, yeah. let's send it to the let's spring reverb. It. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna send the whole we're thing send to the spring. everything to the spring, and then okay. we're going from what is the, the spring, spring now to our mixer. Whoa! There we go. So that's with the reverb fully wet. This is the physical. Oh! Yeah, you're muting all the the vibrations, right? Spring reverb works where you send the audio into the spring, yeah. and then the spring reverberates, and then there's another pickup on it that then takes it and you hear the reverberations. That's how spring reverbs work. Yeah. And so if I actually press it, it stops. Or you can play it. Yeah, you can hear the noise of the spring. It's metal. Yeah, so heavy. Literal metal. Um, yeah, literally. Ah, or all the way dry? Yeah, that's, that's the, the original that's signal. That's the original signal. This isn't doing anything. And then dry and wet is the more of the spring we hear. Yep. Oh, cool. Add the feedback. Ooh. Let's do it like real, real wet reverb. Okay, I understand this. I understand what's going on. I could definitely see how it, this is kind of like a, a relaxing, like yeah, a very meditative. Exactly. You could spend just hours and you're creating a patch. <laughs> you love that pitch knob, huh? Yeah. Well, I think for me, like anything that I can like perform. Would you want to connect something so that you can change the pitch of everything, but have it all stay in key? You can add these these invisible hands yeah. to what notes you're playing too. That's exactly and since, it. And you could also make it random to where it's gonna be random notes in that. Yeah, key. yeah. Put this through another VCA. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, you're hearing just the springs going, and it's just gonna be like clicks, I think, if I go fully dry. Yeah, because oh, I pulled, yeah. I pulled like the a beat. out. Oh, yeah, well, okay, so I can go to quarter note. notes. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so if I'm, I'm gonna take this pitch sequence through this voltage controlled amplifier and mm -hmm. then take that signal into what is uh, called a quantizer and I'll just yep. set this to a major scale. What is a quantizer? So quant Right there before we get into quantizer, we're gonna cut this one off for today. We're gonna jump into part two tomorrow. Legitimately, some of the, I wish I had the time to sit here and watch this one all the way through. I really, really do because this is beyond fascinating. These two are obviously some kind of wizards because there's no way that I could set that up in my room legitimately and still have a normal life. I would be sitting there playing with it constantly. People would be worried about me. That's how addicting that would get. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, most certainly go over and show Rob Scallion some love on his Scallon, sorry. Go show Rob Scallon some love on his channel. Seriously, that's ridiculous. Uh, I've never even thought about synthesizers in a way before. Honestly, I just thought it was somebody making a noise. This is way more scientific 
and way more musical than I ever thought it was. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, go show them some love. Hit the like button if you liked it, the dislike button if you disliked it. Check out the other video up there, one of these guys up here. Until the next one, I'm highly combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe. I love you to the moon and back. Peace.